Hello, I'm Alex, and welcome to the Puck Monkey Report. Today, we're going to be talking about the state of the Florida Panthers and their off-season plan. This is the Panthers cap situation. As you can see, we have around $3 million to spend, and we have a lot of players to sign. Some notable players we have to sign are Etelusterinen, Claude Giroux, Mason Marchment, Ben Sherratt, and Lucas Carlson. In terms of goaltending, we don't need to sign any. Barring a Bavarovsky trade, we don't need to make any move in net. Maybe, perhaps, find a better number three goalie, because Jonas Johansson isn't cutting it. That's it. One of the most important factors in order to free up cap space for the Panthers is to either trade or buy out Patrick Hornquist. This could help us free $5.3 million in cap space if we were to trade him, if he's a positive asset. I got a feeling we don't want to give, like, let's say, Vancouver Canucks a second and Patrick Hornquist in exchange for, like, future considerations. So if we want to bite the bullet, we might have to buy him out, and that will result in a $1.76 million cap hit for this year and the following. I know that many people view Patrick Hornquist as sort of like the captain without the C. He's, our, he's always talking to the refs. He's always getting the boys hyped up before the game and after. And he's... A very underrated player, but for $5.3 million, and when, when we have to sign either Mason Marchment or Claude Giroux, that $5.3 million is better allocated to Claude Giroux, who we should let go of in free agency. The Panthers will let go of Lola Chari, Robert Haig, and I put it in quotations, Joe Thornton. The reason I put quotations about Thornton is because I believe that Thornton won't play throughout most of the regular season and will possibly sign a contract with the Panthers before the trade deadline. Sort of like how we were able to sign Viteri Lindbaum the previous season. I think that Zito will work on contracts with Claude Giroux, Mason Marchment, Etulo Strinen, Maxim Mamet, Ben Sherratt, and Lucas Carlson, and Viteri Lindbaum. There, I see three options for the Panthers this offseason. I believe the Panthers will only be able to sign one or two of Claude Giroux, Ben Sherratt, or Mason Marchment. Barring a massive trade, that will move a big cap, such as Sergei Bobrovsky, of whom the Panthers have been shopping. There have been reports of that. I don't think it's likely, because we would have to retain possibly half his salary, and that would be $5 million. And I don't think the Panthers will be willing to do that without getting a big asset, or a good ELC, or a A-tier prospect, or a first-round pick. So I only see one or two of these players signing. These will be applicable for all of the options. All the options will have the Panthers signing Lucas Carlson to a one-year contract with an $875,000 cap hit. The Panthers will also sign Maxime Mammon, who has been very underrated, to a one-year $975,000 extension. They will also sign Pateri Lindbaum to a one-year $750,000 two-way extension. And Etelo Sterinen, who is an amazing underrated fourth-line center, to a two-year $1.5 million extension. I would also sign... Alexei Hepinoniemi, who also would need a contract, although he didn't play a lot, to a two-year $875,000 extension, and caught Grigory Denisenko from the AHL. As I think both Alexei Hepinoniemi and Grigory Denisenko will need to crack a roster spot in NHL in order for us to use their services. With all of these moves in place, the Panthers have a little bit over $5 million in cap space. Option A, we keep Claude Giroux. With a little over $5 million in cap space, the Panthers prioritize Claude Giroux over Mason Marchment and Ben Sherratt. I believe the Panthers will sign Claude Giroux to a 2 by $4.1 million extension. The reason why I chose point one is that Giroux decided to take a smaller cap hit since he quoted he came to Florida to win a cup. His, his job isn't over yet, and he's going to try to be proactive in signing with the Panthers, and also there's no state tax in Florida, meaning that he can have a smaller cap hit in Florida. Let's say he were to sign with... Toronto, he may, like, let's say, take $5.1 million cap hit, but he'll still get, like, 4.1 with all those taxes. Not saying that's correct, that could happen because there's no state tax in Florida. This situation, option A, could create a very tight salary cap for the Panthers. This is how I imagine their lineup will look like. Then again, I don't know how Paul Maurice would do it, but this is a lineup, I believe, that Grigory Denisenko should crack the top nine in order for us to feel his impact, because he is a top-tier draft pick still, in my opinion. Lived up to ex expectation yet, but I believe in Grigory Denisenko. This option will create the, let's say, least defensive improvements for the Panthers, as we'd be losing Ben Sherratt, and we will be really relying on Lucas Carlson to fill in a defensive role throughout the whole season. 
Option B, keep Claude Giroux and Ben Sherratt. With a little over $5 million in cap, I believe that the Panthers will sign Claude Giroux to a 2 by $4.1 million extension, same as previously. The reason as why the options are the same as option A. In order to keep Sherratt, the Panthers will trade Brandon Montour. The reason I chose Brandon Montour is because he has a $3.5 million cap hit, and he is, like, let's say, our fourth offensive-minded D-man behind Ekblad, Weger, and Forsling. I believe the Panthers should also trade him because he'll help recoup some draft capital, which we really need. With around $3.7 million in cap space after training Montour, the Panthers signed Ben Sherratt to a 3 by $2.75 million contract. The reason why is as to why is that Paul Maurice is now behind the bench and Sherratt first head coach when he was in the NHL and the coach who made Ben Sherratt who he is now is Paul Maurice, our head coach. He started a career in Winnipeg Jets. Ben Sherratt is also a Swiss Army knife in terms of the defense. He can play all throughout the lineup. He has proven to be in the top pair as he's been there with Dustin Bufflin back when the Jets went to the Western Conference Finals as well when he was paired with Shea Weber when the Montreal Canadiens went to the Stanley Cup Final a couple years ago. We've also seen Ben Schrott play on the top pair with Aaron Eckblad in the playoffs and on the bottom pair with Goodison part of the regular season. He can be utilized anywhere. With this option, we see that Lucas Carlson is still our number 6D and we still be relying on him. And we also see that Grigor Denisenko is still in the top 9 since we were able to keep Claude Giroux. Our top 9 is set. Option C. Keep Mason Marshman and Ben Schrott. With a little over $5 million in cap space, the Panthers prioritize Marchment and Sherratt. The Panthers extend Marchment to a 3 by 2.5 million extension. Hey, you may be thinking, isn't that a little cheap for Mason Marchment? The reason why Marchment took this deal is that he's taking a pay cut since the Panthers created his career and who he is today, and also let's stay tacked in Florida. The Panthers also signed Ben Sherratt to a 3 by 2.5 million dollar extension. The only reason why this extension is cheaper because this was the only way for the Panthers to stay under the cap. This situation would give the Panthers basically no cap space. This is what the lineup will look like. Our top six defensemen are set in stone. We will not have to rely on any rookies or very inexperienced players, as we will all have veterans in our lineup. Our top nine, our third line is basically intact. If you want to move, let's say, Sam Reinhardt to the third, create, recreate that Mason Marchman, Anton Lundell, Sam Reinhardt line, that I uh, love, and try to experiment with Grigory Denisenko, and try to experiment with Grigory Denisenko on, let's say, the second line with Hubel and Bennett, and on the first line with Verhage and Barkov. Maybe he works out, maybe he doesn't. This, this is a little risky, only because Grigory Denisenko has some untapped potential that we don't know whether it would be a top six or a bottom six. Now we come up to three big extensions. The one I want to talk about the most is the Huberto extension. He, in my opinion, is Mr. Panther. Besides Luongo, who has been retired, and Alexander Barkov, he is Mr. Panther. He has broken so many records, and he loves South Florida so much. I believe he'll be willing to take a long-term deal. Eight years, yes, eight years. I know it's a long time. For a player like Huberto, I think it's worth it. And I say he signs less than $10 million, less than Sasha Barkov. One, because Sasha Barkov is, in my opinion, our best player. And let's say, as a contract comparable, $9.5 million is the same contract that Nikita Kucherov got, I believe, two years ago. So if you want to compare, like, winger to winger, you can compare Huberto to Kucherov, in no sense. And in my opinion, those, are, minus the playoff experience and playoff points, Huberto, in the regular season, especially in the previous season, have shown that he can be a top-tier player in the NHL. Two other extensions of note are Mackenzie Weger and Spencer Knight. Spencer Knight's a little harder to tell because we don't know how much he'll be playing, if Bob Broski will be traded, or how well he'll do in this Paul Maurice system. His numbers could be really, really bad, or his numbers could be amazing, and you can turn to the next Connor Hellebuck if you want to compare American to American and coaches to coaches. So I decided not to worry about the Spencer Knight contract because there's so many moving parts to that idea. The next big contract is Mackenzie Weger, our number two defenseman, you could say. Mackenzie Weger is liked a lot by fans and also not liked a lot by fans. His analytic numbers are amazing. They show that he could be a number one defenseman on basically any team, but then you look at some of his mistakes, especially during the playoffs on the ice, and it makes you go, uh, maybe not. And Mackenzie Weger is such a weird case. We create him, he was drafted seventh in the seventh round, 
by us. He was one of our rarest players to be drafted later in the first round and crack the NHL, especially in the Dale Talent era, who has only been able to like create like two or three players in his ten year tenure past the first round. And Mackenzie Weaver is a weird one. He could get like let's say a six point five million dollars, like Colton Perico or Justin Falk have gotten, but then his term is weird because he's about to turn thirty years old. Yeah, he was drafted in the same year, I believe, as Barkov, but he, he was like two years older than him. So going long term with Uyghur would be kind of odd because you don't want a 38-year-old Uyghur, let's say, a $6 million cap hit. You might want to go five or six years with a five or $6 million cap hit to go with that. Thanks for tuning in to the Puck Monkey Report. I'm Alex, and see you next time. Welcome to the end card and watching my first video. I plan to make more NHL-related videos in the future talking about any team, but with a main focus on the Panthers. I plan on making videos about extensions, trades, and free agency signings, as well as historic videos, such as talking about the career of a former player, or talking about a former Stanley Cup winning team. Thank you for watching all the way to the end card. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next time.